and amen. amen. Good evening. We're going to go directly into the word. Uh, again, I want to say, turn, uh, Tish, get me uh, Ephesians, maybe the second chapter. Ephesians, maybe the second chapter. Yeah. We are just grateful for the opportunity to come to study God's word. It's very important. Um, what's missing? Th that's what's missing. Um, I don't think, Pastor Henry, that God has diminished any. I don't think God has lost any of his power. Uh, I, I don't believe that, that God has abdicated his position, that he has walked off and left us. I think that God is concerned. Uh, either Peter would not have written in his epistle, Peter declared, cast your cares upon me. And life is full of cares, isn't it? There's always some concerns about life. Uh, the only person, I know, Bobby Womack used to sing a song, said, Harry Hippie. You know, never worries about anything in particular. And sometimes my life just gets so responsible, Sister Bugs, that I kind of envy a bomb. Somebody that doesn't have, you know, responsibilities. But, but you know, God uh, created us for a purpose. For a purpose. And uh, even when people retire, I noticed that the folks that's retired, they try to find something to do. And, you know, God did not create us for us just to, to drift. And what better purpose, uh, what better way to find your purpose than through the word of God? Through the word of God. Pastor Henry, we've been in a series for a while um, about how God works. How does God work? Um, it's one thing, Brother Gilbert, for somebody to give me something, but if I don't know how it works, then inevitably I'm going to abuse it. I, I don't, if you, you ever had anything, and, and you know, we, we are notorious, Sister Wardlow, about not reading instructions. We are notorious. We'll fool with it, mess with it, and whatever, until finally maybe we'll get just frustrated enough, just get the book out and just read to find out how does it work. And I have a confession to make with you. I, I was saved for 25 years and preached for 25 years and actually never took the manual out because I was so involved in church that I overlooked God because I thought that, you know, you just uh, need to be a good church member. Just, you know, and, and, and you do what the pastor say and, you know, you get involved in the choir or get involved in uh, ushering or do something. But the word of God is very important to the believer. Now, to a person that's not a believer, the word doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And so now we found out that, first of all, the father works through the son. God the father works through the son. He says that you cannot come to me except through the son. That, that I do not give you access except through the Son. And that's what's so, so hurtful about people who call themselves frat, the uh, Jehovah Witnesses because you cannot witness that God, that Jehovah, Jesus is Jehovah, but they do not recognize him as God. They just said that he was uh, maybe a prophet or like the Muslims do. And so then Jesus stood up one day, I think it was John the 14th chapter, and he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so you cannot get, but you know what, Brother Gilbert? We would not know that unless we knew the word. And see, folks want to come to church and do everything. You want to have popcorn suppers and you want to have a, a weenies for the children. and you want, But God ain't called us to do any of that. What God called us to do was to instruct. It's to perfect. Now, we, we can't save anybody. I don't care how good a preacher you are. I don't care how good your program is. I don't care how anointed your musician is. I don't care how anointed that you are. God does not work through you saving anybody. Everybody that's saved was saved by grace. Through faith, that not of themselves. It was the gift of God. God does not allow himself to be indebted unto man. Give me Romans, the fourth chapter. 
So we see that God the Father works through the Son. So then, Pastor Percy, I have to give Jesus Christ his rightful place in order for it, this to work. Now, <laughs> we think, see, lazy people think that you can do anything and things will work. And, and you know, that, that's the reason that, that, you know, folks work all their life and they can't even buy a house. They got to rent. Because you, you, you think that something just going to fall on you. You see? But, but you have to plan. No, don't, don't nothing just happen. Ain't, ain't nothing just automatic. There's a reason why that more than half the people that get married don't stay married. There's a reason why. There's a reason why that in our communities, other people sell us stuff and we don't sell ourselves nothing. That don't just happen. And the reason it happens is, is because we think something just going to happen. But it doesn't happen like that. Then we get jealous in your other people who are doing well, but these people have put in the work. LeBron James is, is, is an athletic uh, wonder and all that and basketball player, but that man, when I see the regimen that he goes through in order for Kobe Bryant, what they go through, this man pay $500,000 a year for somebody to follow him around to keep him in shape. Nothing just happens. And there is an order. God is a God of order. Tell your neighbor that. Tell him, say, God is a God of order. God is a God of order. God of order. And so what that means is, is that if you are rebellious, you're going to lose out with God anyway. And that's the reason that he said that uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. You ever known a man like that that would rather buy you a purse, would rather do this and do that and, uh, rather than love you? You see, the easiest thing in the world is to just, you know, like you sacrificing or whatever. But God wants our trust and our obedience. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. First of all, Brother Gibb, but I have to know God's word. Then when I know his word, then I take him at his word. And then I take a stand, mother, on his word, and I don't let anybody move me from his word. And in order to do that, then you cannot have the fear of man. Because Satan is going to send some man in your life to tell you that you need him. But I came today to serve you notice that no man is more important than God. Because when you really need something in your life, flesh and blood ain't going to be able to help you. It's not going to be able to help you. Have you ever needed to get a prayer through? Have you ever needed to connect to God? Thank you, Jesus. So then we found out that the Father works through the Son and that the Son works through the Spirit. When the Son was going back uh, to heaven, he told, they got angry. They, got, they said, well, they said, don't leave us. Because you see, man loves to see something. You see? But have you lived long enough to, to find out that, that what you can't see is more real than what you see? What, what you can't see is really more real than what you can and he told him, he said, I wouldn't leave you comfortless. I'm not going to. I'm going back to the Father. I'm going to pray to the Father, and, and I, I'm going to, he's going to send the Spirit back, and he's going to be the Spirit of truth. He's going to be the Spirit of truth. You see, in order, God cannot be discovered. I don't care. And that's the reason that you got a whole lot of folks with degrees that don't know God. That's not that they're not smart. But God, you cannot discover God. Huh, thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad I know him. I'm so glad I know him. I respect him, Pastor Henry, because I cannot just sashay up to God. You see, God, not God. Oh, yeah. Sometimes people are impressed because I'm a lawyer. Sometimes people may be impressed with the car I drive or the clothes that I wear, whatever. But you see, God is not impressed with you. <laughs> oh, God, God is not impressed with you at all. Huh. I know the first time that I actually flew in a plane and the man said, we 35,000 feet. And I looked down there and I looked and saw how small did everything look. You see, but down here, everybody looked like they, 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 you know, they running everything. He says, I'm going to send the spirit back and he is going to be the spirit of truth. Y'all, it's something about knowing the truth. In order for your life to change, you have to get some new information. 
if you if you if you are walking according to the same information, you'll never change. And that's the reason it's so important to be open minded. That's so important not to think that you know everything. Because see, new information gives me new direction. So, so then he tells them that the spirit that I'm sending back, you've been hearing me, but you ain't been hearing me. And he, the spirit of truth has come, then he will teach you and guide you into all ways. You see, Pastor Henry, contrary to what we've been told, we ain't no worse than nobody else. You ever had people that try to make you feel like that you're worse than them? Or that you just don't, you know, you that people specialize in that, especially in church. They specialize in throwing off. That's when they got somebody, you know, that's when they got that row of folks sitting up here with white, or with, you know, with white dresses on and nurses' shoes and hats and all. They're like they've been dipped in Clorox. Like they more holy than the rest of the congregation. That's when the pastor come up here. He sat up there and he went and bought all the robe and everything. Took all your money and bought all this robe and put all the chains on and all that. But the truth of the matter, it ain't a dime worth a difference between none of us. The Baptist deacon knew what he was talking about when he said, if the Lord don't help me. I know I just said something. If the Lord don't help me, I can't stand the storm. Has, the, has he been a leaning post for you? Has God... I didn't come here tonight to give no man no praise. I come here tonight to give God the praise. God has been good to me all the days of my life. When I was ignorant to the fact that I was ignorant, God touched my mind. God gave me another chance. God gave me brand new direction. God sat me down and taught me. He taught me how to treat my family. He taught me how to treat my brother and my sister. He taught me this. He taught me how to forgive myself. Most folks in church walking around with a spirit of guilt on them. Spirit of condemnation. And the reason is because you don't believe the word. You think you need to come to a revival. You think you need somebody to preach over you. You think you need somebody to throw some oil on you. And all you need to do is just believe God. God God's word is the only solid foundation. Because all those emotions come and go. They, they, come, they will not last. But God's word is a firm foundation. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so Jesus said, I'm leaving. We said, but I'm sending the spirit back. And so the spirit works through the word. And we got that twisted because we think the spirit is jumping and shouting and, and talking about then, 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 and stuff, all that, and just, just, a, just a whole bunch of confusion. You ever been to a church where you look like, look like it's a wild spirit up in there? It just look like everybody wild and running and whatever. And when you get through it, you ain't got no understanding. What did you learn? You see, faith, faith come by hearing. And hearing the word of God. I used to do that same thing when I went down there to Hammond's Club. That's right. I wasn't drinking no near beer or nothing. I would give me some mad dog 20. I ain't gonna tell off on you tonight for a person. I was getting we getting that mad dog 2020 because I wanted something that was finna take me up quick. All the way up. Take me up. And I'm telling you what, we liked it. We cut the lights on low because we, we wanted to just get off in that fog. And, and, and it, it's, you see the same thing in church. And then you want to call it the spirit. You got half, you take your daughters and what up and everything. You got them up here talking about a praise dance. And they up here half naked and all this right here. All that old seductive stuff. It ain't nothing. I'm that preacher. Because I ain't preaching for friendship, money, or nothing. I ain't taking no offering tonight. So if you don't like it, you didn't lose nothing. But folks just sitting up talking about God put the man of God up on, up on the wall. He told you, cry loud and spare not. Ain't no use of you sitting around acting like you don't know it. Somebody need to say something about it. That, that ain't none of the spirit. All it's doing is for lazy people. It's for people who don't want to know how it works. But I want you to know something. You can get that right whooping. You can get that right whooping. I remember when I was a real young person. And didn't have no wife, kids, or nothing like that. It didn't even bother me to lose no job. I miss around. I overslept. That's why I tell him I overslept. Well, you are, uh, uh, you know, you, you fine and everything. I, then all I want to know is where my check is. Where my check is. I wasn't even care. 
But now, as I got older, yeah. uh -huh, and I was feeling the missed meal cramps. <laughs> and then in some when you got a family, brother, yeah. it, it's different when it's just you. Yeah. But when you look at over there at them, and there ain't a woman living that loves you so much, thank you, Jesus. What is we going to do? The spirit works through the word. If there is no word going forth, that's not the spirit. The spirit is always going to lead you to what God said. But we so lazy that we would rather just get drunk. Girl, didn't we have a time? Didn't we have a time? See, when we found out how it worked, we done saved a whole lot of money. We ain't got no choir director up here switching. I'm just sorry, y'all. I don't like no man that switch. I'm sorry. It just, I, I, you ain't going to be sitting up lying to you. I just don't. That's just me. Now, I didn't say God. I said me. And we ain't got no, no organ player. Do you know that they'll pay the organ player more than they pay the preacher? He more important than the preacher. Because the preacher ain't saying nothing, but when he get up there on that organ, and that choir get to sing, and you love it. But you're not operating in the way God works. God has an order. Then, Gene, you got somebody who God dealing with. And they sitting up there, and they sticking out like a soul throne. Because everybody else seems like they so happy. All the music is going forward, and everybody looking at you like, what's wrong with you? And you just have to tell them, they said, he ain't saying nothing. You see, the believer is like a fish out of water when ain't no word going for him. Because, see, he has given up on trying to run his own life. And he's trying to get some direction from God. And see, the thing about it is, is when God baptizes you by his spirit into the body of Christ, you're a new creature. And you need something that an unbeliever don't need. You need a word. And so, and, and many of us have been in that situation where we didn't want to. You know, when God saved you, he make you sweet. So you don't want to be the troublemaker. You don't want to be the one. But, but, but you're not satisfied. And every time you say something about it, it looks like you make people angry. He said the spirit works through the word. Now watch this. He said the word works through the believer. So a believer does not function unless he has a word. Amen. But Pastor Henry, watch this. Once the believer get the word, he is a force to be reckoned with. It's like something that got him that's bigger than him. And they don't understand why we can't sit you down. What gives you the audacity to do the thing that you do? But what happened, mother, was I got a word from the Lord. I don't mean, I don't mean it. It's, it's kind of like when Jesus uh, was going on his way to, to heal the centurion's son, and, 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 and the centurion told him, said, hold up. You don't have to go no further. You don't have to go any further. You see, he understood how things work. He said, I'm a man under authority. And when I tell a man to do something, he's going to do it. And all you got to do is all you got to do is speak the word. If you speak the word, whatever you say, it's going to be done. Yeah. Jeremiah told them that, that God's word was so effective that God would not allow the word to come back to him void. As a matter of fact, God would watch over it, Vivian, until it was performed. So the word works through the believer, and the believer works through faith. And we have established that the God the Father has never made a mistake. God the Son, had they're God, they can't make mistakes. They're perfect. They cannot error. So the Father and the Son and the Spirit, the three are one. They're both, uh, they're all God. So there can be no error here, Pastor Henry. But now we look at our churches, and we obviously see that something is real bad. Something is real bad, wrong. Uh, so he says, the spirit works through the word. Now, the psalmist said his word was settled forever in heaven, that his word was pure. There was nothing wrong with his word. So he says, the word works through the believer, and the believer works through faith. 
Paul says that God gave them apostles, and prophets, and, and evangelists, pastors, teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. And what happens is, is that we've got God gift men, and then men begin to merchandise the gift. They want to sell what they have. You see, but God didn't give them that to sell. He gave them that. The purpose was, was that the believer's faith would be perfected. So what you have now is you have people that are saved. And what I found out, Brother Percy, that when you begin to fall into error, when you mess up, when you make mistakes and, and, and all this, then people want to say you ain't saved. But you see, the salvation is not over here. The salvation starts here. You see, the Father chose you. And he did not choose you because of what you was doing. But he chose you because he God and he chose you out of his love. And looks like God chooses the most unlikely folk. Folks that we never would choose is the folks that God go and choose. So God chose the believer, but then in order for the believer to be in fellowship with him because man is so nasty and man is so despicable that he didn't, nothing in him is good that God could not fellowship with him so he had to make a way in order for me to come to him. And it could not be of me because everything that I do, there's a little something wrong with it. So he sent the son to go and die and pay the price he himself purged us of our sin and then went sat on the right hand of the father and so now the, the son went and died and he, rec he that knew no sin became sin that we might become, be made the righteousness of God. Do you know that many people don't know what God did for them? All right. You know they didn't tell you that. What they told you was say you need to keep on trying to be right so you make sure you get to heaven. They told you, you said you got to do this, got to do that. How many preachers that you see get up talking about what you got to do in order to get to heaven? You, you got to do this in order to get to heaven. Ain't nothing you can do. Because all have sinned and come short of the, right, of, of the glory of God. So now, the son has reconciled man back unto God. So what that means is, watch this. What that means is, is that Jesus died on the cross about 29 AD, shed his blood, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And so the only payment for, for sin is blood. Yeah. Not you coming up talking about, Lord, forgive me, snotting and crying. I was in the club last night. I was over that man's wife's house. Lord, please forgive me or whatever. Nowhere in the Bible where it said that that's going to get you into heaven. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, Jesus had to be. I, I got a message that I'm, I'm getting ready. I got a message I'm getting ready, I think, to preach. God gave me two messages, Mother. Uh, we're getting ready to go into a new series, Life 101. See, what's wrong with the church is not they need to be saved. They don't know how to live. Life 101. The first, and the first message is the necessity of rejection. And the second one is when seasons change. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, when the spirit. Uh, so, 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 so God, before you ever got here, had forgiven you. He does not forgive you based upon you. And they never told me that. Because I kept looking for God's forgiveness after I had been saved. But forgiveness is not based upon me. Forgiveness is based upon the work that Jesus did upon the cross when he died on my behalf. I believe that. And the reason I believe it is not because the church is teaching it, because they sure ain't teaching it. The reason I believe it is because that's what the word says. And so the word works through the believer. They had me all messed up. I thought I needed the pastor. I thought I needed y'all church. But what I needed was the word. But what they try to do is they, make, they try to make you turn your back on the word. The only thing that can help you. They separate you. Ain't that just like Satan? Separate. He don't care nothing about you dancing. He don't care nothing about you, uh, 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 how tight you are with the pastor. He don't, they don't care nothing about how you love that building. You know these folks love, in love with these buildings? That's the reason the early church didn't have no church buildings. They met in houses. Because, you see, these people in Corinth and places came up out of abject idolatry. 
where they were serving other gods. In Athens, I mean, Greece back there, you see all those buildings, they got the Parthenon and all that stuff, those ruins. What you think they were? They were temples to idol gods. And so, Mother, they did not want to set up no temple. Ain't that what we got in there? We, boy, we'll brag about how much we got a million dollar church. We got, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. The believer does not work, doesn't work on the building that he, the believer works through a word. He's got to have a word. If he get a word, Carl Ray, can't nothing stop him on this side of heaven. Can't nothing stop him. Can't nothing stop him. You know what? The word will make you be all right, but your mama turn her back on you. The word will make you back. You know what? They think we miss them, but I promise to God. When I, when I fell in love with the word of God, and I'll, I'll be the first one to say, man, I, I love the church more than I did the word. I never pick up my Bible. And what they do is they, they make you, uh, they, don't, don't worry about the Bible or nothing. We, when we come and everything, I say them same old scriptures that I always say and shout you and everything, then you can go home. But I was telling Brother Jeff, I said, it's something about this place right here. And what's going on? They make you want to do self-improvement. I, I, I just, it's something about this that make me feel like I can be better. And, and what I know about David C. Is, is when I'm better, the folks around me better. The folks around me better. See, if you, your people are tied to you. That's the reason I'm so hard on men, Fred. It's because your, your family is tied to you. And no matter how uh, outstanding your wife is, if you ain't about nothing, she can't hold her head up. Every time that she get ready to hold her head up and everything, she says somebody going to say, yeah, but your husband. But you see, because man is the head of woman. I don't care what they say. The man is the head of woman. And I ain't got no problem with no woman preaching. I don't. I think God can speak through anybody or whatever. But I just, I, I, I can't find it in the Bible. How you get from being quiet to pastor? How, how you get from being quiet in the assembly, now you the pastor. And if you the pastor, then you over me. And God ain't called no woman to be over no man. I don't care how smart she is, I don't care how much money she got, or whatever. And why do I believe that? Because the word says it. I'm staking my life on the word of God. All the rest of the stuff, I guess it's good I don't got to be 60 years old, man. The older you get, the more you don't care. Can I get an Amen. The more you'll get, I mean, if you want to wear a yellow shoe and an orange one, you're aware and don't care who thinks, you don't care who can't say about it. I feel like putting on a yellow and an orange shoe today. God bless you. The world ain't going to stop or nothing because I do that. But when you're young, you worry about everybody, Pastor. The believer has to work through faith. I got Romans 4. Look what he says here. What shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory. Brother George King, what I'm finding out now is, is that God does not make hard terms with anybody. It's man the one make you jump through all these hoops and all this stuff. I know when God called me to preach, they talking about we want you to come before this board. And we want you to do this and, and want you to do all that. And, and for what? And then he take, had enough nerve to say this right here. Just like I'm giving you these lights, I'll take them back. That right there let me know I didn't even want it. You can keep it. You can keep it. You can keep that. But he says, but man wants to have something to glory about. Now, it's just like a person when we were coming up. And we started feeling ourselves. And uh, that's when Edgar Blaine Holly didn't have too much to say. But now, you could cross a line where he had to get you in line. And you know you done got in trouble when he started calling you son. Now, you really are his son, but when he says son, you in trouble. He says, son? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Just like when I come home sometime and Deborah said, Vanda, oh, Lord. Don't let us say nothing about that. Family, we need to talk and everything. I want to go to cussing and just, just 
I don't even want to be married no more. Let me go. I don't want what I got to talk about. He said, son, ain't going to be but two grown folks in here. That was the law right there. Now, we were playing, and you know, you push the envelope, and you say, you know, you might even say a few things. They walk up and say, what you say? I ain't said nothing. But Pastor Henry, when he got to Eggerblank, when he got to that right there, son, ain't going to be but two. You see, God is not going to have no other God beside him. He, he, he not going to have no other God beside him. And we done made everybody God. Pastor, the mothers, the deacon. You can't even talk to the pastor before you go through him. Well, you got to talk to brothers. What? You ain't my pastor. That's my pastor, right? You mean I got to talk to somebody before I can talk to my pastor? And he do that because he choose the deacon. That's the one to know all his secrets. You had a deacon see the deacon. When he make it sneak and everything, the deacon take him. He didn't thank you, Jesus. Y'all think I just be talking, but I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to tell you something. The time is out for us hiding. It ain't a dime worth of difference. I'm going to tell you, the only man that don't like women is a homosexual. That's the only one. That's the only one. That's right. And it's just like buying cars. I see the car you got, but it's more pretty cars than what you got. And you know they're pretty, too. Mm-hmm. And so the only thing for you to do is be honest and get some help. You get some help. That's all God wants us to do. Look, he said, God, the Bible says that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. But you're so busy trying to make these folk look up to you. You trying to steal God's glory. When all you supposed to be doing is pointing people to God. You ain't supposed to be pointing folk to you. You just like the people. You got problems just like it. We finna talk about that in life 101. Mm -hmm. All of us handicapped. All of us got some handicaps that we came into church with. But God saved us not based on the fact that we was whole. But he saved us on the base of his election. If you say it tonight and you tell the truth, you'll tell the truth. Say, God, I wasn't looking for God. God was looking for man. Don't look for God. Man hides. Man loves darkness. He don't love light. God has to find your hiding place. God has to loose the hound of heaven. The Holy Ghost has to worry you and convict you. And he don't care where he do it. He don't care what bed you in. He don't care what bar that you up in. God don't care where you at. Because he says the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. Ain't no place you can go to hide from me. You know, we thought that we could leave. Well, you know what? I'm going to leave and I'm, I'm going to do this. And when you went over there, God was right there. Saying the same thing to you. And he said, with love and kindness, have I drawn. You're running from the very thing that's going, that, that you need, the very thing that, that's going to love you, the very thing that's going to deliver you, the, the very thing that, that you need most in your life. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That's the only thing that God expects me to do, Sister Brenda Brewer, is to believe him. I don't care who don't want to believe him. You're not going to make me take down. You know, and you see, you got to get over this stuff about about folks not liking you, and 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 this uh, who you think like you don't like you. You ain't got enough sense to know who like you. You ain't got enough sense to know who like you. God got to show you who your real friends are. God got to show you. You see, what I found out is where low. There's some people we like. And when we like them, we want to make them. And so you, you can get so in fantasy land that you make folk be what you want them to be. Then you are all surprised when who they really are. Coming. That, that's who they was all the time. The signs was there all the time, but you just was ignoring it. But when you get a singleness of eye and say, God, you bought me, Lord, and you paid the price. And so I don't have but one master. I belong to you. 
And so what I see, Sister Bugs, is, is that so many people are trying to steal you from God. They want you to worship them. They, they want you to follow them. I don't know, bro, person, I don't know how many jack leg preachers I done had that want me to take this church and put it up under them. Now, come on. Come on. Let's forget God, the Holy Ghost, and all that. I done sat up here and worked for 12 years. And it took all my money, Deborah money, and y'all money in order for us to have a comfortable place to worship with. And now you want to come in and tax and get a certain percentage. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. But what happens is, is that the Satan got their mind so much that they just feel like they got a right to run over you. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say, the running over day is over. The run, the run, run over days over. You don't run. You don't get to do it. I, I ain't. I can't say that you hadn't done it. But I, I come to serve. No, that you ain't running on me no more. Not me knowing it. Not with my eyes wide open. Cause whatever it is that you got, I promise you, I can do without it. That's what I tell y'all all the time. Don't be so needy. Because evil people identify your needs. And what they do is they hype you up and they tell you about what a great man of God that you are and what you're going to be. Well, I don't want to be nothing. I don't want to be nothing because I ain't nothing. Now, why do I say that? Because the Bible says it. Paul said, in me. Now, if Paul said it, who you think you are? Because you done got seven members. And they done had you an anniversary. And you got two, three more preachers more ignorant than you that decided to follow you. You see? He's, Paul said, in me. That is in my flesh. Yeah. Now, y'all, when he says flesh, he's talking about in his ability. See, God does not want us to trust in our ability. God is all about you giving up on yourself and trusting him. Why do you think it is there's not many people following God? Because man loves himself. That's what the cross is about. The cross is about a death to you and being resurrected in the newness of life. And in that newness of life, Paul says, I'm crucified. But nevertheless, I live. But the life that I live, I live through the Son of God who died for me. So then it's no longer me, but it's God that's working through me. And sometimes, Brother Robert, it'll surprise you. It'll surprise you. I know when God first started dealing with Brother Robert, man, Robert came to me and said, man, this is, man, this is God that made me into a punk, man. I remember when I would knock. You remember telling me that? But you surprise yourself because it's not you no more. You know that you used to cuss up a street. You are cuss them up one side and the other. You know that some of these folk that playing with you now wouldn't have had, they wouldn't have had a thank you, Jesus. No kind of change. But the thing about it is, is that the cross has been applied to your life. So you don't even feel right doing it. You know that if you do it, that you got to come back and beg their pardon. So I, I might as well not even do it. I'm going to give you a pass. And you better be glad it's not me. And that's the reason that Jesus went to the cross. Peter didn't want him to go. But Jesus went to the cross, and the Bible said he condemned sin in the flesh. And we are supposed to follow him, take up our cross, and follow him. He says, now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. You see, the problem, Fred, is, is with the believer's faith. We have been taught, ever since we've been going to church, this is what you need to do. Well, you can't get to the right place with the wrong instruction. You see, he gave us the cross in order to die to you. What you do is not important. Only thing that's important is, is what he does through you. But he, can't, he is not going to share his glory. And if you started coming up with schemes, you started coming up with plans, you said to come, oh my God, they got so many plans of how they're going to grow the church and how they're going to do this, how they're going to do that. I ain't going to do nothing but go home and get my Bible and, and try to love my wife and go to sleep. 
I ain't had no programs. I ain't had no revivals. I ain't invited nobody or nothing. I ain't, I ain't went and sat in nobody's pool up here trying to tell them I'm no preacher or nothing like this. When we had seven members, Vivian, uh, for, for them three years or whatever, God gave me a, 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 a logo or something, and that was flourishing in obscurity. Yeah. You see, don't nobody have to know about you in order for you to do good. I, I give you an example. I was going to the gym. I've been walking every day since July 27, 2015, at least two miles a day. I was going to the gym, but I got tired of going to the gym because you go to the gym, you got to deal with people. They want to talk. They looking at you, what you're doing, all in your business and all that stuff. So I got a treadmill out there, and I got weights. I got everything, you know, that they got. I got it at the house. So I start just doing it at home. And you know what folks said when they say, you don't fell off, ain't you? You don't go no more. I said, no, I don't go no more. I don't go no more. You ain't got to know what I do. You ain't got to know what I do in order for me to be effective. I know what I do. He says, but to him that worketh not. God mean for me to stop. Get somewhere and sit down and wait on me to move. Wait on me to move. The lady gave me this example right here. I don't know, some of y'all don't know. Now she was a woman, but she was talking about football. When you're playing football, you got the linemen that's in front of you. They're protecting you from, from the other people that's coming. So then, Pastor, uh, they got something called a pocket. Now, the pocket is safety because the linemen can cover you if you stay in the pocket. But when you're looking at these big six, seven, six, eight folks, uh, 300 pounds, look like they're getting ready to come across and everything, your first instinct is to come out the pocket and scramble and move. But you see, no, you done left your safety. You got to stay in the pocket. You got to stay in the pocket, see? And, and that's what happens with us. We got the word. Yeah, but, but then we start looking at our trouble. We start looking at our bills, and we start looking at the persecution. And we, but just stay in the pocket. Just stay right there in the pocket. Uh-huh. Yeah, you got, to, you got to have patience. Then they went to what old man Isaiah said. She gave another example that was real good. She said, now, I'm a hunter. I said, now, where's she going now? She said, see, you know, when things ain't coming as fast as I want to, I'm going to go out here and hunt and find it. Yeah. But you know how many know that when we go out, when we leave the pocket and go out here hunting, we wish we had left whatever we find. <laughs> Tom, you're looking too guilty. We wish, <laughs> we we look, look, we wish we had left it where it was. And she said, instead of being a hunter, you be the hunted. You let God send you what he got for you. Instead of you leaving the pocket and going out there, clap your hands for the <laughs>